and welcome back to Southeast Texas Weekly. I am your humble reporter, Kevin Steele, talking politics with our usual panel. I say that in general terms. We have a fantastic new guest to introduce all the way on the right side of your screen. Lewis Ackerman, the Orange County Democratic Chairman, joins us. Yes, happy to be here. Man, so great to have you with us. We appreciate it. Uh, also, Kent Batman, the Hardin County GOP Chairman, Good to be here, Kevin. is here, and Godfrey Leggett, who is the chairman of our hearts, uh, <laughs> is, uh, is here <laughs> nice as well. Here, and it's time to talk politics, and uh, most notably, the State of the Union standing out, the president calling for unity. Everything he said was good, and uh, you know, he said some good things, but what he says and what he does are oftentimes two different things. There were themes that he put forth, the unity theme he put forth several yes, times, yes, the yes, bipartisanship theme. You can't theme. trust a man to follow through on anything. He lies like every every day he tells two and three lies. He talked How about policies. That's, that's that would, Democrats in white robes. No, no, I'm not saying the Democrats minutes. are in white robes. But seconds, so there was a lot of white, and that was about women's rights, uh, uh, arguments uh, made by uh, women in America that... Uh, the rights of women have been rolled back by this president. It's like what Justice Ginsburg said, the only problem we have, gentlemen, is you having your foot on our throats. You know, in, in what areas do you think that uh, women are women's, most in danger women's of Women's rights to rights. choose, women's right to choose, has to be there. Lewis, is that what you see? What are, what's your perspective on, on this? They, you know, it looked like a quarter of the room was uh, wearing white last night. Uh, I, I absolutely agree. I think the big one of the biggest issues when it comes to uh, women's rights in this president is their right to choose, their, their reproductive rights. Um, we have a system right now that is not designed to, you know, help a woman make that decision positively. It's very much a hostile system and he's and, and our president has taken that that hostile stance. Was the president hostile in the State of the Union address? He was com extremely conciliatory. Like I said, all those ladies in the white dresses, they stood up and cheered him for 51 seconds. Yes, but I can't also, believe also I have what terrible he optics. To to all those Democrats be wearing white robes the week that Northam is admitted and discovered to be a racist. It was terrible. The, the, the optics. Nancy Pelosi with her mouth behind the, behind the screen, that's terrible. Okay, the optics did not look good for Democrats, he says. What do you, uh, I, I, I thought I, they did a fine job. I think, I think it's, you know, Did they make a statement? A the, the women in white, did they make a statement that uh, the, it, will not be, well, it will not be taken lightly if women They were cheering back. some of the things he said, but like I said, him saying something, it's sort of like having an ice cube and a blowtorch. How long is it going to last? Well, they did not. Uh, m most of the room, without stereotyping the full contingent there, most of the room in white did not applaud uh, free paid family leave, for example, a proposal put forth by the president in the State of the Union. Or low unemployment rates. I don't think they'll ever, believe they'll ever get it. The I president think. referenced the lowest minority unemployment rates in the history of the nation, and most of that contingent did not stand, visibly stand, and, and, didn't, and did not applaud. Surprised? Uh, not, you know. I mean, I'm not. I'm not terribly surprised that they no nobody stood for that. Nobody cheered for that. It's <laughs> it's real easy to. Now, I'll put it this way: our, our president is such a controversial figure. Even if he does something positive, you start to to question whether or not he's being genuine about yeah. it. Uh, and I, I also would question whether or not he's responsible. For those figures, anyway. I mean, Trump has spent a lot of time taking uh, taking credit for the work of other people. A CNN this, poll this reports that 59 percent of the respondents said they liked what they heard from this particular State of the Union. 59 percent of the Seven, respondents. 76 on liked CBS. It. Well, it doesn't matter because the man's not going to follow through with half of what he says. <laughs> Do you Latitude. understand? 76 percent of people uh, watching disagree with you. He lies. Okay, okay but you're in the 24 percent minority. Oh, good. No, it's it's easy, it's it's easy to say that you like what you hear. Uh, right. Most most people would say they liked what they heard. I liked I liked what I heard coming from the president. But I'm glad to hear that. How can you be so sure that he's lying on these points? That he's the, a, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Which and has been he, excellent. And he has lied 
more than he's told the truth to this the point. The things he promised is what has what has happened. Cutting taxes, causing this yeah, huge turnaround. Cutting turn taxes around for who? For the rich? Everybody. Oh, blow it. Yeah, you're not going to go to it. But if you did okay. Google it, you'd well, find that the, that the okay. greatest I'll percentage was, was the, president, I, oh, the president referenced an economic miracle in America, uh, referencing areas in which there had been in his view, substantial improvement uh, in the economic... The uh, economic expansion has been going on for 10 years straight. Not, not in, not in yes, the manufacturing. I don't care about... I know you don't care. Segment. You're, but you're, the, but you're, the, but the expansion, care either. The expansion has been going on for 10 years. At a very, very slow rate. And a slow the recovery unemployment, is like a recession. It's, oh, if you put <laughs> a, a slow recovery is like a recession. If you look at like the Bureau recession. of Labor Statistics, okay, yeah. and lay out the graph and put a, 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 a ruler, it'd go right up through the, through the little... During the Obama years, lines. the total number of jobs went down, not up. During the, the Obama only, years. Only during the first year. Only the, during the, the first year. The net was And terrible. ever since, we've been headed up. Barely. Not no. like we're getting now at 300,000 like new jobs could, last month. I, I should have brought it. I had a, a chart from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. People that, uh, on the TV show, Google this stuff. <laughs> the numbers all you, favor. You really should close. Google this stuff. Go to the it's, Bureau of Labor Statistics and look at the charts. Back yeah, to the point of uh, yeah. mm -hmm. unity, if you will, uh, with Lewis Ackerman. The, you know, the, the argument that the president made uh, on, you know, a, a lot of people were wondering, would the president say something about a national emergency at the U.S.-Mexico border? Uh, with more caravans, in fact, at the border, would there be some reference to a national emergency? And yet, there wasn't anything specifically to that point. We did hear some on, on immigration. Uh, were you satisfied that uh, the president took maybe a, a, a little bit of a different tact? Uh, I guess I was satisfied they took a different tact. The, the typical, uh, we need a wall, we need it now, this is a national emergency, that, that's just ridiculous. Um, I would love to see comprehensive immigration reform. That's where our problem is. What could the president promise to work through the logjam with the, the speaker? Stop talking what about could he, What wall. could he say <laughs> that would work through yeah. it? I, I, I would think they would say, no let's, let's address no. DACA. He did. Let's let's address pathways to Great. citizenship. These young he people, did. These young people he should already... He addressed already, that. Uh, he already kid. addressed it. Yeah. Uh, wait, address it, turn is it? These young people... Go ahead. Go ahead. Take, take my time. <laughs> they should already right. be They Go should ahead. already be citizens, the DACA people. Okay, so right now he's saying, let's talk about it, and you're saying, I don't want to talk about it. Talk is cheap. Oh, so you don't want to do anything about no, it? No, I, I want something done. You don't want to talk? You don't yes, want to act? You don't yes. want to do anything? No, I'd be ah, glad to talk, but I, I want see. some action. More on the border and more on the wall or the fence or whatever we're going to call it today. Uh, when we come back on Southeast Texas Weekly. Hi, I'm Jim Serber at Sabine River Ford. We know the other guys make a great car, too. Considering a Chevrolet, Ram, or even a Toyota, whatever you buy, don't make a mistake. Not knowing what your vehicle is worth could cost you thousands. I'll give anybody a guaranteed cash offer on any vehicle, whether you buy from us or not. Just visit SabineFordBuysCars.com and get a real cash offer from your home or office. No need to go to the dealership, no pressure, and no need to bring it in. It's another reason why Sabine River Ford is a great place to do business. It's time for Mardi Gras Southeast Texas in downtown Port Arthur. Enjoy the new Cajun Zydeco concert stage. Starting Thursday night with Alley Cat and Cajun Harmony. Friday is Gerard Delafosse and Zydeco Gators. And Kean and the Zydeco Masters. Saturday is Platinum Players Zydeco Band. LT and Zydeco Mob. And Joey Greer. And Sunday, it's Brian Keith and Zydeco Legacy. And an encore with Kean and the Zydeco Masters. Catch the excitement at Mardi Gras Southeast Texas in downtown Port Arthur. And we are back on Southeast Texas Weekly. What do you make of the fact that the president seems to be trying to work through something on this gargantuan border issue? The fence, the wall. In only nine days from this taping, there will be, again, uh, more discussion about a government shutdown. Uh, the president uh, has said that he wants to work through this issue. He talked about bringing a policy, bringing policy about to where a larger number of immigrants would be able to be in America legally, is the way he put it. And he has, in fact, held off on the notion of a national emergency to this particular date. Does the fact that he held off on the national emergency, does that mean that there is a conciliatory tone out of the White House? Absolutely it does. I mean, he's, he's offered options that we used to talk about. There's never been a better time to have comprom comprehensive immigration reform, like we've talked about for years, the Gang of uh -huh. Eight thing. Uh -huh. But if they don't get in a room, now there's 
there's rumors that possibly some of the Democrats and Republicans are meeting in this, this committee, and they're actually maybe coming to some compromise. But the leadership does not want any compromise. I don't think that's true. Well, I can see why you wouldn't think well, that. Well, I don't. I think that they really want to have a, a good immigration system. They've, they've been talking about it for how long? So you think they are talking and coming to an agreement? Is there I any, hope so. I is there I any situation, would there be any uh, carrot that could be dangled that would allow you to say, why not go ahead and put up a fence? Is there anything that yeah. would work for you? Make all the DACA people citizens tomorrow and find all the parents of all those children, every last one of them they've got in compounds down down there on the border. Okay. Find he every parent. He offered both of those things. You know, that, no, he didn't. He, uh, well, the president you don't want to bet on this. Uh, no, no. The president whatever, has... Look, whatever the president says, I don't believe. So, you know, so, I have so really lost all What you just said was if he said that, you'd be. I don't care what he said. He said it what he says he said one it. day changes the next, and the next changes the next. It sounds to me like changes. you just change in five the, seconds. So, Lewis, so, what, so, what do you think? Is there the anything that. Would you, would you accept a fence in any way, shape, or form? Let's say it's a let's say it's a fence four feet tall. Would you go for that? It only costs like $200. I would I would stand against a four foot fence more than I would stand against the wall because part of this conversation is fiscal responsibility is what is going to work on the border yeah. we have a list of great options that are way better than a wall let's invest in border patrol uh, let's get more border patrol agents let's get some technology on the border but, rather than a wall a wall is a 13th have, century problem but we do have walls in El Paso. a 13th century solution for a El Paso and yeah. Southern Southern California, and mm -hmm. those are working. We're not having problems in those areas. What do you they mean? We weren't having but problems before the wall was put there. Seriously, yes. in Seriously. El Paso. Yes. Well, let me. Let's, 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 we, let's, we also we also have additional. Uh, Resources in those areas that supplement the wall. The, I, I'd say I, 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 I would I would accept I would accept a partial, wall if it, was, if it was yeah. part of a comprehensive the border solution. Patrol I, has I agree. Said I, I agree, and I think everybody everybody does. Yeah, there that, are, would, that would compromise. There it. are probably a few places where a wall makes sense. So mm -hmm. Now you're starting but, to come around, but not 500 <laughs> miles. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's wall. saying 500 miles. Well, well, you talked him into it, Kent. This is a, this is a. I don't think anybody ever thought about the fact that we're talking about small portions. He's been saying I'm not talking about. 500 miles. I'm talking about portions here, portions there. Sometimes these poor he said, people. You've got the terrain. You've got advantages. These poor people that have been mistreated in their own country, coming here to live life in America, need They're to be really welcomed with open now. arms. One we third need to of them all the women are arms. raped, Godfrey. Yes. How do you know that? Because, well, for one thing, I do, do have you know a friend that, that worked out worked down in the valley, and yes, they I, are getting raped. I'm sure. Yeah. I think. Well, they, they, there are uh, two additional that, caravans. That's a Republican uh, talking point. At this point, there are two additional caravans that are uh, coming. Uh, how, how do towards, you know that? Towards the board. Video. Oh. Okay. Just videotape. Just video. How, how yeah, big are that's they? That's somebody uh, well, went down there. You can see a, a there are, lengthy there are line of people lengthy line. Is it eight thousand people like the president said? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well, somebody should go down there and actually count. Yeah. I did see the video. Do you just count the video? I, I, don't, I don't trust the damn thing the president says. You, you discounted the video? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't trust be the president. I don't trust the president. Hey. No, okay. I haven't no, seen the video. Are you, you going to believe him or your lying eyes? Yeah, well, okay. I think that it's, it's an Final important words. issue that our president is not a trustworthy president. It, it goes beyond our differences as See, Democrats. I and felt that about Obama, though. You got to understand that. I felt that about Obama. You feel mm -hmm. that about Trump. I think we got to just throw that out. Oh, you're right. I understand that. But the difference yeah, is, if you look at a, a fact checking of Obama's statements and a fact checking of uh, Trump's statements, like, like it's Benghazi. Vast, it's Benghazi was different. started by a video. Obama wins it's hands vastly down. different. Obama <laughs> Benghazi was started by a video. Why are we talking about Benghazi? And with because that, because we can't make can we, can we have draw. any conversation so without going back to Bud Obama, Hillary, Hillary Bud Benghazi, Bud Hillary, so Bud Hillary, so many Bud times Hillary. Obama let's talk lied. about emails now. Let's just say, let's just say we won't say that either mm -hmm. one of them lied. Okay. And with that, we have to go. That's what they do. I'm sorry, we have to go. We are going to be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Jimmy Odd and Son in Jasper, your one-stop furniture store for over 65 years. So if you're looking for a new sofa or appliance, Jimmy Odd and Son has the best selection to spruce up any home. At Jimmy Odd and Son Furniture and Appliance, you always get 12 months, no interest. 
Are you suffering from painful, stinging, or numb feet? Do you have restless legs, swelling, or poor balance? If your life has slowed down due to these conditions, Gerstenberg Clinic has a solution that's covered by Medicare. Our clinical trial requires no surgery or addictive medications. It also has an improvement rate of 80%. Call today or visit online to find out if we can help relieve your foot pain. 409-210-3336. To track severe weather, download the 12 News Now app. On Southeast Texas Weekly, I'm Kevin Steele. Be sure and let us know how you feel on political matters. Maybe we can use you in our programming here. We would love to if we can. Politics always a very exciting thing to talk about, yes. especially right after a State of the Union yeah. address. Jeff Lewis is here, a Republican activist. Fernando Ramirez, a Democratic activist and media just here, there, in the next place. To be, uh, to be sure, in mm -hmm. other, other spots. So you can't even keep up with him. Yeah. And the great Michael Lynch. Lindsay with uh, Lindsay Lindsay and Parsons. Great to see you again, sir. Good to see you. Kevin. We missed you last time around. Uh, surprises, observations from the State of the Union. Anything that you heard that sounded positive? Uh, anything that you liked to hear and that you uh, uh, quite in uh, opposition to your uh, beloved uh, colleagues? Go ahead and get that. Yeah. Would uh, uh, would uh, actually that you would believe the president on that he he could you know plausibly do anything you heard? That well, you I, I like paid uh, I like paid child care and I like yeah. paid family leave and I think that's fabulous. And yeah. I can't wait for him to shoot that over to Mitch in the Senate and get that rolling. That could because yeah. that could happen. That would excite me. <clears throat> that that could happen. One thing I think. I mean, in, in other words, if he's being uh, truthful about that, that could could that could pass yeah. Yeah, yes, in sir. the Senate. I I think one of the things that uh, the overall everybody liked it. I, I think uh, even uh, after the commentators, they had some uh, differences of opinion, but the overall people liked what he said, and I think that's gonna upset a lot of people because I think as time goes on, he's starting to realize how to be a better polished person and making a presentation. Wow. Did and you, that's a scary thing. Did you did you see that? <laughs> did you see a, a reformed president, so to speak? What I saw last night was the battle, drowns, uh, battle lines being drawn for the 2020 campaign. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was know, a campaign the, speech in the, your view. Well, every State of the Union is a campaign <laughs> speech. So, I mean, An economic miracle happening in America today. Uh, you know, what, what we saw last night was the, re, uh, the president spending a long time uh, listing his accomplishments in the first two years of office. They're incredible, okay? What he's done with the economy is nothing short of miraculous. What he has done fighting for the border is nothing short of heroic for what he has actually tried to get done. Now, has it gotten done? No, but who's to blame for that? Is it for the legislation that's been passed or the legislation that's been stalled in, this, in the Senate and the House mm. by Democrats? Okay, okay On last night, we yesterday, we saw legislation struck down in the Senate did not come to a vote that would have actually protected babies as they're being born. Apparently the Democratic Party is now the party of infanticide. I would like to see this defended. Yeah, the, the law in uh, New York, uh, a late term abortion uh, law that uh, essentially allows uh, for abortions uh, that uh, would be uh, credible with doctors in terms of the health of the mother and the, and uh, the and This the, is and actually beyond late-term abortion, okay? Uh, last time I checked, uh, you can't abort a baby beyond nine months, okay? If it's out of the womb, it's no longer an abortion. That's no. just flat-out murder. Okay, well, that was what, that was what being, des being described by the Democratic governor of Virginia. That was the legislation that was passed brought forward in the Virginia legislature, okay? So this is not an abortion issue anymore. This is a matter where not we're going to commit genocide simply because a baby has birth defects. I'll give you That's a chance obscene. to, to yeah. comment, to uh, <laughs> reference that if you like. Well, I think my, my first question is, hey, I thought we were going to have the states regulate this. When Texas is passing its legislation, it's good. I don't like what the te Texas legislature does, but if I don't like it, I can move. 
If the state of New York thinks this is good for the people of New York, let them work it out up there. This was been a state's issue is what we've been arguing yeah, about. Yes, I understand that. There, well, there's there's one problem with making that's York. a state issue is that, one, the Supreme Court interjected itself into something that was previously a state rights issue, but now has become, by precedent, a federal issue. So how do we handle it on the federal level? At some point, we had to determine whether or not a baby has a right to life, okay? At what point is it a baby versus a fetus? That's something that the courts have previously determined, and every other country on the planet has determined is well, at least at 27 speaking, weeks of Wade, viable. Legally speaking, Roe v. Wade allowed uh, abortion in the United States, and Doe v. Bentley uh, uh, stepped forward and basically it, it, it said... It created a right to privacy which was expanded to include that a, a mother, a pregnant mother, has a right to have a private decision on whether or not to bear the child. the decision also gave broad latitude to the, to the notion of not putting particular emphasis on the health and life of the mother, allowing for the right. New York law. And, 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 and what he was making the argument was is that Roe v. You know, this is normally this should be a tenth uh, tenth amendment issue, and my point was yes, this would have been a tenth amendment issue had we had not two things happen. One was the advent of Roe v. Wade that federalized the issue to begin with. The, the last thing I'm going to say on this is, I'd sure like to see people get as excited about feeding these kids and giving them health care. Absolutely, yeah. and I think that's what and we've said it before. I think one of the things we're going to have to do as Republicans is once we do get you know abortion at the very least rolled well, back, what we, rolled we way back. We, yeah. we, We've got is one we're going to have to figure out how the families that don't, don't have food security. Right, and, and one of the things one of the things without medical care in the in the country right. in this. And, and Texas, one of the things yeah. we're going to have to address is how do we care for the children that are born instead of aborted, and how do we you know do we create a federal uh, system for or even a state system yeah. for yeah. Quickly, getting and, and, uh, and adoption expenses? How is it going to affect the political parties? I'm telling you, the Latino community. Mm -hmm is not going to go for these pro-abortion uh, policies. And the thing is, they're probably not going to go Democrat or Republican, so hello, gotcha. independent party. Uh, and I think that's coming. And the ladies in white, I think, uh, showed that we, also. Yeah, we have to do a quick break. We'll be back to talk about America. And the president says America will never be a socialist country. We'll talk about it after this break. I was with my classmates. We had to drive maybe an hour in the rain. We get in a car accident, but we were all fine. We were already going to be late for class, so my idea was to go ahead and walk to Whataburger. Every time I go to Whataburger, I'm going to get the Monterey melt. The peppers are perfectly cooked and grilled. The jalapeno ranch definitely sets the burger off. I just love it so much. Since we were late for class, we took my teacher some Whataburger. If we're going to be late, we have to bring something. We have to bring a good excuse, and we have to bring a good meal. The Monterey melt is my all-time favorite. 12 News, innovating weather technology again. More views from more places with the 12 News SkyCam Network, powered by the Medical Center of Southeast Texas. See live weather as it happens from La Bear's Casino in Lake Charles, Education First Federal Credit Union in Beaumont, and the Howell Furniture 12 News Studio Cam. For more live views from more places 24-7, log on to 12newsnow.com and click on weather. Your only place to find the 12 News SkyCam Network. We are back on Southeast Texas Weekly. We are joined on the far right by Michael Cole. Great to see you. Right. Former candidate uh, for Congress in Orange County. Good to see you, my friend. An activist, to be sure. Unity was struck last night. Was there anything that would bring the parties together in any way? There was... So there were strong words, there was harsh rhetoric uh, by the president uh, at times during the address. He said, America will never be a socialist nation, uh, and there was uh, thunderous applause in the House chambers. Well, I think it just gets down to what kind of... Uh Everybody's definition of socialism is different. You ask mm -hmm. two people, you're going to get three or four opinions. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is like when he says socialism, is he talking about ending welfare reform? Democratic socialism? Uh, democratic socialism. Is he talking about getting rid of welfare for low-income people? Or is he talking about ending corporate subsidies in which profits are privatized and losses are socialized? You have to ask him mm -hmm. which socialism he's what, against. What he is referencing. It always uh, has, it, it's had the potential to work every time. Uh, in uh, the global use of the government system, and it just has never been done right. In Cuba, in Venezuela, 
in France, it's just socialism has never been you know, done, that, right? That, Otherwise, that, it would have worked. That, that's what the Germans in East Germany said. That, you know, socialism was started in the wrong country because Russia couldn't make anything work, and they thought they could have made it work in East Germany just fine, and then a wall came down. Uh, you know, for all the talk that, you know, by the way, earlier that walls are a 14th century invention or something like that, whatever they said. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so was the wheel was spinning in 2000 BC, and yet we still use it because it's effective. Yeah. So, well, you know, what I'm saying okay, is, right? the you know, wall in Rome and <laughs> the great Rome. wall of China. Yeah. 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 The, world, the word socialism, unfortunately, it's going to fall on age of the person because different people have different views on that word socialism. If you were World War II or parents were in World War II, you're going to be against it. You Polish have a different shows, opinion. Polling shows large numbers yeah. of uh, the younger demographics mm -hmm. are fully supportive of socialism in some, yeah. in some form or Because fashion. they don't have that background that... Uh, they didn't grow up in the Cold 50 War. 50 years... Mm -hmm. uh, People with 50 years or older have uh, a different identity. You're saying the term is a is a, is a is a a construct that is negative to Americans of our generation, yes. but maybe not of You're the older. younger generation. Yeah. Socialism uh, is a lot of wealth. Ocasio is a perfect example. What, what, what's the perfect? Ocasio is a perfect gotcha. example. Uh -huh. yeah. her, her age, she was elected with that, so and others were. But here's the problem, because I think our education system is not teaching the the way history was it's the interpretation of what they want let's include everybody and make everything okay you. did the president in fact make big points with his Republican base by the comments, America will never ba be a socialist country. Ba base was already secured. What he actually did was put the Democrats in a very bit of a quandrum here because uh, you saw the leadership having to shake their heads in agreement and the three quarters of the party was sitting on their hands uh, because socialism is live well within the Democratic Party. Did, I mean, the president that's half the platform. did the president dramatically improve his re-election efforts by referencing uh, what he called an economic miracle and by talking about the manufacturing jobs that came in by the tens of thousands? Oh, he didn't have to reference the 600,000 manufacturing jobs in order to help him politically. I mean, that's live and well for the people that are up there in the Rust Belt and, mm -hmm. you know, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, these people are paying attention and, you know, they've seen what we've done. He, they've seen him, uh, for all the talk that he's a liar, he's actually stood very much by his campaign promises you're and done exactly say, what he prepared to do. You're prepared to say Pennsylvania's, whatever, 24 electoral votes 20. are going back, 20 electoral mm -hmm. votes are going back to the president? Would be huge if they did. <laughs> well, manufacturing I wondered if you would go and, that far. Uh, Labor and agricultural labor are two different things, and you're having even Republicans who are farmers defending the need for having better immigration to help them with uh, the harvesting of their crops. So when you talk about economics, you know, again, there's two different levels, two different things. Yes. Yeah. I only have 90 seconds. Let's get to this notion of what happens in the government shutdown talks. This will be airing at a time right up until the uh, until the potential of a shutdown, and it's all about the wall. The whole crux is the wall, the fence, whatever. What will the, what will happen? Who will blink uh, in this dramatic American debate? I think when it gets down to it, that uh, one. Both parties should probably blink and do something to get around it. Two, I think Trump is going to probably look at the numbers that a majority of Americans blamed him for the shutdown as it drug on. Uh -huh. Whether you agree or, or disagree, the polls, they, right. the thing is, is like, you now have gotten to the point where we're not only campaigning for the 2020 presidential election, you've got people already thinking about challenging corn, and you've already got people thinking about running for the House and running for the Senate. Will the Republican Party mm -hmm. sit there and allow Trump to get another blame for this shutdown and hurt every incumbent Republican I in the House and Senate? 30 seconds. So final quick words. And, and the difference between now and then is that you know the president has put this on the table. This is back on the Democratic-controlled House to put forward a bill that will enforce seconds. And that reinforce our border. If they can't do that, the Democratic Party is to blame for this shutdown. And with that, we have to run. Thanks so much, guys, for being here. We appreciate it. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Southeast Texas Weekly. I think there's one.